All right, so for today's session, uh, we're going to mostly be looking at uh, a couple, two, actually two notebooks. So we're going to look at one that's called Aphantasia and one that's called Illustrip. They're both by uh, a creator by the name of Vadim Epstein, um, and they use Clip, which is a model that allows you to basically score images based on uh, text inputs. Um, and they also use, uh, well, in this case, most of these will use just sort of They'll generate images from RGB. Uh, so what, what we'll basically be able to do with this is we'll be able to provide a piece of text and we'll, we'll start by generating just images uh, so we can get sort of used and comfortable the, to the sort of way in which these tools work and then we'll um, adapt that to the video. So this is a video that um, I built uh, or I made using Vadim's Illustrip notebook um, and you'll see it sort of combines um, text. So this actually is Walt Whitman's um, songs, of my, songs for Myself, uh, the first stanza. So basically took each sentence, broke it up into, uh, well, took the first stanza, broke it up into sentences, and then I was able to generate uh, different images from it. Um, and you'll see this sort of like 3D effect. We'll look at some other things um, as we manipulate this. We'll look at how to do correct text prompting, those sort of things. Um, so for this session, uh, you should have maybe two to three sentences. Um, if you generate more, that's fine, but I would recommend keeping it kind of short to start with. And then as you get more comfortable with the tools, expand a little bit further. Um, so yeah, uh, if you've never seen clip stuff before, um, well, you probably have, um, if you're at all interested in machine learning art and you follow anything on Twitter or Reddit, you'll probably definitely have seen these sort of tools. Um, this started maybe almost a year ago, um, Ryan Murdoch, uh, who I've interviewed before, if you want to check those out, I definitely recommend that. Um, Ryan made a notebook called the big sleep, which took clip and used a machine learning generator called siren and was able to generate images from that. Um, and since then, the sort of clip art community has like sort of blown up. Um, there's probably 10 or 15 creators these days who I like actively follow and try to keep up with, and I really can't. Um, and there's a whole like each one of them has their own Discord community and other things. Um, it's really, really fascinating and, and really expansive field. Like if you saw the big sleep, uh, which came out a year ago versus what this is today, um, and there's even some other stuff that I think is even sort of next level from this. Um, I think it's pretty cool, but there's some other stuff that's really wild. Um, in a year, we've been able to sort of generate all this stuff from a really cool community. So uh, we'll get started with just producing images, uh, just so we get a sense of sort of how things work and uh, the different techniques we can utilize and that sort of thing. And then we'll expand to doing this sort of video work. So um, let's get started by just taking a look at Vadim's uh, GitHub repo, and then we'll go from there. Uh, before I get started, I do want to give a shout out to Vadim Epstein. Uh, we're going to look at the Illustrip notebook uh, today. Um, he released this on Sunday, open source. He, so, he, so he sort of made it publicly available to everyone um, on Sunday. So we're going to be using like cutting, cutting edge stuff for this class. Um, but Vadim had previously made it available on his Patreon page. Um, I know many of you follow my Patreon page, so I want to give a shout out to him. Um, he has a bunch of other additional uh, tools as well on here. So um, there's a couple of things that he hasn't made public yet that you should check out if you're interested in um, sort of his work. I think he's one of the more fascinating people doing stuff um, with machine learning right now, or at least like stuff that's related to image generation, that sort of thing. So I um, just want to give him a shout out before we get started. Obviously, like there's no requirement for you to go send him money. But if you are interested in following uh, a pretty interesting uh, machine learning image maker, uh, I definitely recommend him. So we're going to look at his repo, which is called Aphantasia. Um, there's a bunch of different tools in here and we'll take a quick look at a couple of them. Um, but if you do come over here, uh, I'll post this link, uh, in our doc as well as, um, in the YouTube page for anyone that's interested. Um, but you'll come here and you'll see at the very top here, we have a, a collab notebook. Um, he has a bunch of other collab notebooks in here as well. Uh, there is text to video, which is Illustrip. So we'll look at that in the second half of class. We learned to generate, uh, sort of image video, more video stuff um, using like pan and zoom and other things as well, um, including some 3D depth processing. Uh, you can use these uh, from a purely command line, but I think his collabs are pretty nicely set up. So there's uh, things there to look at as well. Um, there's also a VQGAN version, um, although I understand that he sort of like has stopped working on it. Uh, VQGAN plus clip was sort of, I guess, I don't know, it feels weird to say this, but two months ago it was the hot thing. Now people have sort of moved on to different models. Um, in part because of size regulations or size requirements um, or limitations, I guess is the better word. Um, so we probably won't look at this, but I definitely recommend playing with these collabs if you're interested in it. Um, and he has, I guess, Siren, which is what I mentioned, which is what Ryan Murdoch first used for um, 
big sleep. Uh, he also mentions it's not really that interesting these days. It's interesting. It's probably just like if it depends on whether you want to go for like the highest resolution, most detailed. Um, Siren is not the most detailed, but it will give you sort of this like sort of blurry, interesting sort of abstracty shape look. So um, we won't go through all these notebooks. So I definitely recommend if you're interested in playing around more to come in and check these out. Uh, we will start with Aphantasia because Aphantasia is better set up to just sort of uh, do general image processing and we can sort of start there. So click on this link um, and you'll get to Aphantasia. Now one thing I should also note here is uh, I know many of you are using the free version of Colab. Um, the free version of Colab has some limitations. Um, mostly you'll get a crappy GPU uh, and that may become an issue with either Aphantasia or probably more Illustrip um, because journey video requires a lot of GPU power. Um, so what I recommend, you'll probably be fine. You'll just need to go with like a smaller image set and be able to wait or be willing to wait a little bit longer. Um, so just start there. Uh, if you do find you really enjoy this process, I might recommend that you pay the 10 bucks a month to get um, Colab so you can be sure you get at least a T4 or a P100. Um, the K80s are just a little bit smaller in terms of memory, which means you'll get a little bit more limit around what you can do in terms of image size. Um, yeah, so with that, let's start with Aphantasia. So uh, I'm on a fairly fast uh, machine here, but I'm gonna go ahead and just make sure that um, I get a decent GPU. So we'll go ahead and run this. So I'm gonna view 100. Um, again, uh, you'll definitely be fine if you're on a T4. Uh, if you're on a K80, you might have some other issues. Um, probably mostly just around resolution size. So I'm going to go ahead and do this since it'll be a little bit faster for us. Um, if you do run into issues, just let me know and we can take a look at that. Uh, so first thing you want to do is make sure you run this very first cell. So actually I was talking to Steven earlier and Steven ran into an issue where he had run this the first time um, because it looks like you're just sort of resuming from places. Uh, but this actually has all the setup code. So um, one of the things I don't like about how people do notebooks is sometimes they bury uh, the first thing, which is just all the setup stuff, and then you kind of forget that it's there. So make sure every time you restart this notebook that you run this cell to make sure you get all the setup installed. Let's go ahead and do that. And you'll see we're just downloading a bunch of tools here. Um, I assume at some point we will also install uh, the Aphantasia library, which he has. And again, if you're on a P100, a T4, K80, this might be a little bit slower. Uh, for me, it's fairly fast. So while this loads, let's go ahead and take a look at what we're going to do next, which is really the the key for this stuff, just like uh, when we played with GPT last week, uh, is really about around the prompts um, and the text prompts you're going to provide. Uh, so again, maybe if you're used to using StyleGAN, you know it's really about like sort of generating the right data set and training the thing correctly. Um, in this case, Clip is a lot like GPT. In fact, they're made by the same uh, company, um, OpenAI. Uh, in this case, it's really about like picking out the correct prompt. And this is where you want to do a lot of prompt engineering or just playing around and trying different things. Um, now, a lot of people in the clip community have sort of found um, some interesting hacks and interesting ways to produce uh, various interesting sort of uh, text prompts that generate good images. So one example, which I'll link to again, um, is this imager, um, someone here, I guess, by the name of Kingdom Acrylic. I guess that's how you would say that, Kingdom Acrylic, uh, made this really, really awesome, this is like super detailed and in-depth um, list of various text prompts. So you'll see here along the top, uh, it is using Mushroom, Spaceship, Volcano. And then along the left here are what we would sort of call like these engineering, these prompt engineering hacks, uh, which are that if you use like sort of little buzzwords or little tokens like this, you're generally going to get something that looks pretty good. Like one of the more famous ones of recent era was ArtStation. Um, so a lot of people found that if they put feature on ArtStation, ArtStation is a popular website um, that was clearly scraped as a part of Clip's data set. Um, if you use feature on ArtStation, you'll generally get like, it tends to have a lot of these glowing lights. I guess it's probably like a 3D rendering um, sort of place where people upload tools. Uh, you'll get this like kind of a particular style or a particular look. And if you can compare that to something like HDR, you'll get a different look, right? Like this has sort of this like color gradient banding um, this has a little bit more of these glowing edges, that sort of thing. Um, you'll see anime produces more anime-like things. Uh, filmic gives you a little bit more of that, like, sort of the film color, uh, that sort of thing. So I definitely recommend playing with this. Um, take a look at this, and maybe you can utilize these as tools for, um, you know, 
generating images that are more interesting to you or what you're sort of the effect you're going for, right? So if you want something like depth of field in your images, make sure you use depth of field as a part of your text prompt. Um, that's going to create some of like these sort of hacks for that sort of thing. So this is very, very long. Um, so I won't go through all these, but I do recommend, you know, looking through it and sort of playing with it and seeing if you can find other ones, right? So there's some like art on Instagram that has this particular like, I don't know, maybe it's like this is the Instagram filter like being applied to this. Um, Associated Press Photo, this is really interesting. It has like very like film, like journalism, photojournalism sort of a look and feel. So um, this is sort of one of the fun hacks. So remember with like GPT-3, it was sort of like, can you set up the structure to provide the right answer that so GPT can provide the right answer. This is similar in the fact that like what you want to provide is a little bit of a hint or a push toward a certain um, image type of generation. So how does this actually work? So if we go to Aphantasia, um, you'll see here that there is a text input and a style input, and then there's also a subtract. We'll come back to subtract in just a minute. Um, so text is where you're going to put in like let's say your phrase or whatever it is. So um, we could sort of start with uh, one that's maybe a popular one with Ryan Murdoch, I know, is um, Green Dog. Now, another thing you might see people do is a high-quality photo of a green dog. Um, this is something you can also do. Uh, some people have found this works better. I'm just going to leave it as a green dog, and we'll just work off that. So style. So this is, again, this might be the place where you want to input one of these. So let's try... Um, Let's just pick one of these. So we'll do a green dog with psychedelic. So let's try this, so psychedelic. Um, so there's really two options here, right? So you can provide a text, which is going to try to probably provide more of the image content, and then a style, which is going to try to provide more of the texture or stylistic style side of things. Now subtract is like, let's say, um, I don't want a dog with a tongue. So you might use subtract as a way to actually remove or negatively affect the image, right? So, um, or maybe a better one is like, I don't want, uh, let's say I don't want um, a dachshund. So I want a green dog that is sort of st styled psychedelically, but I want to make sure that I don't get a dachshund. So that's just how this works. Um, this does, this library, so I should also mention, because um, I know we have some folks in international countries in this class, uh, by default, this wants, this will take inputs as, um, from English. So if you are a German speaker and you want to try to use German, you will often end up with an issue. Um, this library has a nice little feature which uh, can translate. So um, if you do want to and writes me in, in German, but you don't want to hand translate it yourself, um, you can go ahead and click translate and that will translate your text phrases into English. Um, invert, let's see what else is here. Invert is the whole criteria if you want the totally opposite. So if you want to go some like the totally opposite of this, you could try that and see what you could do. Now the other option is here, um, and maybe we'll look at this in just a minute, we can upload an image. Uh, and this image will be our ints, like sort of be like what the image starts with. And then from there, uh, it'll provide a style from there. And I think that's true. Let me just double check. Yeah, OK, cool. Um, so in some other libraries, there's an image uploader that uh, can define the style or the content of your image. Um, in this particular library, uploading an image, I believe, is what starts the, uh, what the image starts from. So you can almost think of it as a style transfer. It's going to change the image based on the image you upload. So if we want to, maybe we could download this. We'll probably do this in a minute. Uh, we could download a photo of, of a dog, and then we could try to turn that dog green and psychedelic, um, and then you know maybe we want to subtract dachshund from it. So we might look at that in just a minute. Um, but once we've got this going, make sure that you hit uh, the play button, because um, you want to save all these details into your runtime. So go ahead and do this. Cool. Um, so next is we want to sort of define uh, the size of our image, and we want to sort of define what, con what model we use and other things. So let's start with this. So uh, first is we want to define the size of our image. So this by default does 1280 by 720. Um, I would probably say like, let's just do it for this. Let's just do something a little bit smaller so it runs a little bit quicker. Um, this is where if you have a K80, you'll likely run into issues. So if you try to make it, I don't know, 4K, um, most of the GPUs you'll have access to will not be able to do 4K images. Um, if you have an A100, you might get away with 4K. Um, I haven't really tried it before. Um, mostly because it's also going to take a lot longer to generate your image. So start with something small, and then maybe you can try to play with getting the size larger and larger until you get a memory error. 
Uh, next is our config. So um, this is what model do we use for clip. So clip, uh, again, as I mentioned, is going to look at the image um, that it gets generated, and it's also going to try to match that to the text. So it's going to say, OK, what does my image look like, and what text are you providing? And that sort of gives a loss score. Um, but there are different models of clip, right? It could be trained on a larger data set, a smaller data set, that sort of thing. Um, so there's different options here. Uh, I have pretty much seen everyone move to VIT B32, um, which is just like sort of the newest model and seems to produce the, the best results. If you want to play with these, you can. Um, but pretty much everyone that I've seen and talked to has said like VIT32 is the one to go with. So let's leave it at that. Um, align. Uh, I don't actually know what this one does. Let's see if it says here. Um, align options about composition. Uniform looks most adequate. Overscan can make semi seamless tileable textures. Okay, so uh, again, I play with these a little bit, but I definitely recommend that if you want to play with these, maybe you want to try something like more tileable, then you might want to use something like Overscan, or uh, if you're interested in really getting an image, um, you probably want Uniform. So let's leave it at Uniform. Um, wavelets, I probably won't cover in this uh, section, but that's like a form of signal processing. Um, so if you want to play with that, you can. Uh, I will skip that for, for this section. And lastly, we have Aug Transformation. So this is sort of the important part of um, how uh, Clip runs, or how these Clip tools run, which is that they're an iterative process. So if you ever play with Deep Dream, you know that Deep Dream starts by taking an image in. And it will start with an image, and then it will slowly optimize the image more toward uh, whatever neuron you're looking for in your model. Um, a similar process with this happens, right? So the first time that we generate an image, if we don't upload an image, it's going to generate sort of Brownian noise or just some sort of noisy uh, shape. And as it iterates over that process, um, the images will get more and more clear and more and more uh, conditioned toward what our text phrases are. Um, but as a part of that, what, what you want to do is you want to sort of play with the augmentation or how you change that image over time, right? So um, you're going to start with noise, then you're going to generate your first step of your image. Um, and then you're going to want to sort of play with it, right? Do you want to like add a little bit more noise in there? Do you want to colorize things? That sort of thing. Um, as you go through this process, one thing that people have found works really well is uh, play with the sharpness level, right? So you want to sharpen things. That way uh, the model can sort of kind of almost latch on to those ideas and be able to produce um, better images from that. So what I always recommend doing is whenever I open someone else's notebook, I start with their defaults, right? So these are all the default looks uh, applications here. Um, so I will sort of just start with this. And then maybe as the images are producing, I might be like, mm, you know, maybe I want a little bit less sharpness. I want it to be a little bit more blurrier, um, maybe to capture certain aspects of the tool. Like maybe um, if you're doing that depth of field trick, you want to keep the sharpness kind of low. Um, if you're doing other things that maybe have that like photojournalist quality, um, maybe you want to increase the sharpness. Uh, that'll just help sort of like, again, it also helps the model sort of play with these things. So uh, you might just want to play with these values, but I also recommend just maybe leaving them as is for the time being. Next is training. So remember how I talked about this being an iterative process, right? Um, it takes an image, does a thing with it, then it takes it, that image and it does the thing again and again and again and again. So this is how many, how many steps we're going to do. Um, so if we take steps, this will be 300 steps. So it'll take 300 iterations. Um, so generally the idea here is that the longer, the more steps you run, well, one, the longer it takes to produce the image, but two, it should get to like a better place the longer you run. The problem with that is it's sort of diminishing returns, right? Uh, you can usually find that in the first, I don't know, 300 to 500 steps, you'll get most of the way to your image. And then it's like, if you want to do a thousand steps, it might get a little better. 2000 steps, it might get even a little bit better from there. But sometimes it also just turns the mush after a certain while. So you want to kind of play with this. I would, again, sort of leave this value as is. Um, samples, let's see. There are some good notes in here, so I definitely recommend checking these out. Um, samples, he doesn't mention what samples is. Might mean that uh, this is how many times it, it passed it by. Uh, oh, decrease samples if you face out of memory error. So apparently samples is the main RAM eater. I believe what this might do is it might actually take patches of our image and compare those to uh, clip. So um, don't quote me on that. Uh, we can sort of play with these. Again, I'm I'm not the... In StyleGAN, I feel very comfortable to talk about these things, but uh, with clip, I'm a little... I'm just like... I may be a week or two ahead of most of y'all. So um, play with these and see what happens. Learning rate is important um, as it applies to steps. Um, the higher your learning rate, the more likely it will jump to the right 
concept or the right idea quicker. The downside is, is that it can jump too far. Um, so I think about learning rate is like, uh, I don't know, how many pages of a book do you read in 30 minutes, right? You can skim it uh, and you might get the big concept or you might miss it all. Um, or you can read word by word, which means you'll be going slower, but you're more likely to hit where you want to be. So um, playing with learning rate might help a little bit, but I would probably recommend leaving it at this for this value for now. And then again, there's some augmentation tricks like adding noise, um, no text. So one of the challenges with Clip is that um, Clip will often produce images with text written on it. So if you say something like, um, I want a red apple, um, you might get an image of a red apple. You might also get text that literally says red apple. Um, it's kind of one of the challenges of this model. So uh, this allows, like, sort of creates a score that allows you to sort of um, reduce the amount of text you see in the image. Um, so if you are, if whatever your prompt is using, like you get a lot of text, you might want to crank up this value, but I'll probably again leave this as is. Uh, macro is another thing. Um, macro is important because what it mentions is if you start to look at a lot of clip images, you'll see that a lot of them have sort of this like collage effect where there's a lot of little little scenes in, in the image, um, especially as your images get larger, you'll see a lot of that sort of collage effect. If you want to try to reduce that, increasing macro will help. Um, that basically tries to create bigger patches of your, your noise image so that that way you're able to um, sort of keep larger scenes or larger objects um, in, the, in the image. So again, I'll leave this as is. Um, and then I assume progressive grow is something where like basically the image starts really small and then it grows larger. And that again might create a case of where you get more um, like a, a subject of your image rather than like a collage of things. So I'm gonna leave a lot of this just as the default. And then we'll go ahead and run this to generate our first image. And this is probably where you're going to experience the biggest lag in image production time. Um, if you're on a faster GPU like myself, like using a V100, you'll probably see this happens pretty quickly. Uh, if you're on a K80, uh, it will likely be a lot slower. Um, that's just sort of one of the downsides of these things. So here you see our first image. So see our very first image is a little bit more of um, just some noise, right? And then um, you'll see it's updating. So you'll see here below it says 6 to 300. So this is each step it's taking. And this will also tell you how much time is left. So there looks to be about seven minutes left. Um, so what I might do is I might just pause this recording so you don't have to watch this grow. Um, and then we'll come back. Well, you know, what? actually for this one, let's, let's just let, let's watch it, watch it grow. Cause I think it's helpful to see what happens over time. Um, and then maybe for future ones, we'll decide to skip that. So you'll see that like, I'm getting something green in the middle. I don't know if it's a dog. I don't know what it is, um, but I'm getting something. And yeah, it looks kind of psychedelic, but I definitely don't see our, a, a particularly good green dog yet. I see something that looks more like a grasshopper. And so I should note that uh, there are different generators. So we talked a little bit about Clip and VQGAN. Um, VQGAN is a model kind of like StyleGAN in that it's a GAN that generates images. So when you hear people talk about uh, Clip Plus or Clip Guided Diffusion or something else, Clip is just the model that is able to score our images based on a text prompt. Um, so Clip always requires some sort of generator, or image generator attached to it. Um, so in this case, what, uh, what I believe um, is happening here is we start with just basic RGB uh, color values, and then we're actually scoring the image based on that. So it's almost like 
there is no GAN generator, which means it's, it tends to be a lot faster um, in the way it produces images. If you were to run this uh, similar prompt with VQGAN, uh, it would probably take about, instead of seven minutes, it would probably take about 30 minutes for the same size image. Um, so it's just helpful to sort of keep that in mind um, that every time you're working with some sort of image generator, uh, in some cases you'll be using something called FFT, which is a fast Fourier transform, which is more of signal processing. This is almost scoring more of the individual uh, like pixel values, essentially. So I'm not really loving where our green dog is heading, um, and that's fine. Uh, I often find that it takes me a while to do the, the correct prompt engineering. Um, it's also just possible that a green dog is not something that this model is particularly good at generating, which is another general challenge of these tools is um, I find that, you know, unlike, so I'm going to my soapbox here a little bit, but I like StyleGAN because I, when I'm building my data set, I generally know what my data set is going to produce on the output. Um, with tools like Clip, you have to spend a little bit more time really, you know, prompting your text and really trying to figure out what the correct um, text engineering should be. Um, so you spend a lot of time sort of like generating different values, different images, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't. Um, so for me, it, I'm slightly less interested in this as a tool because it requires a lot of manual time, whereas I like sort of being able to automate a lot of stuff through data set production. So again, lots of people love Clip and find a lot of that fun and, and joy in doing this work, and I hope you do too. Um, but I'll just note that it does take a little bit more time and effort to uh, really engineer your prompts to make sure that you're producing sort of the best images that you can. So one thing I might think about is like, okay, so my dog didn't really work here. Why is that? Um, it could be that maybe just like a green dog wasn't a good idea. Maybe I should try a high quality photo of a green dog. Um, maybe psychedelic is also hard. Like one, dogs aren't generally psychedelic. So that might also be kind of screwing it up. Um, so, you know, maybe we should look at a different option here. Like maybe we should actually try to produce, um, maybe we can actually do what's, what's here and just try to replicate what we're getting. So maybe we want to do something like, uh, you know, watercolor, um, and I guess this is mushroom, right? This is what the mushroom phrase was. So we could even try that and just sort of see what happens. Like maybe we want to do a uh, mushroom and low poly. So, uh, I maybe started us with a bad prompt. It happens. Um, maybe other people are producing good green dogs and there's just a trick to it. It's also kind of a bit of a challenge because with these tools, if you remember that first image is noise. So every time you rerun this, you might get different images out. And that's really important to know because, uh, you might just want to run this a bunch of times and see what you get, get out of it. So if there's a particular phrase you really want to illustrate, um, I highly recommend that you run this tool multiple times. Um, that way you know that like you're going to get different images out, that sort of thing. So um, I'm actually going to go ahead and stop this because clearly this dog is not going anywhere. Um, so maybe I'll do one or two more just based on this um, this tool. I should say, you know, this is a really great tool to look at, but you shouldn't feel like you're stuck only doing mushrooms, spaceships, houses, and volcanoes. Um, if you dig around on the internet, um, maybe I'll add a couple links to people who are sort of constantly producing uh, really cool clip images, you'll see that there's a wide range of things that you can produce. Um, but maybe just for this demo to make sure I get some image out that looks good, um, I'll go ahead and just use one of these. So I think we'll do, uh, I think we'll do low poly mushroom. So let's try that. So I'm go ahead and stop this because my green dog did not look quite green or good. So let's stop this, stop. And we'll come back up here and we will change this to mushroom. And we'll change this to low poly. And we will remove this. So let's go ahead and run this to save it to our runtime. And we'll just use all the same settings. I don't think the settings were the issue this time. So here again, we get all of our noise. And now we're generating images. So uh, I will pause or stop the recording and I'll come back once it's finished. That way we don't have to stand here and wait for the next 10 minutes. Okay, so here we have our mushroom. 
um, and it looks fairly low poly. Uh, one of the nice benefits of this particular notebook is that when you're finished, it also generates a little cool little video for you so you can watch it uh, change over time. And you'll notice, I sort of noticed that with this um, image that around the middle point, it sort of finished sort of the overall structure changes and really just worked on um, maybe changing the color slightly. So this might be a good indication that for future versions, if you want to sort of optimize this a little bit more, um, you could run it for about half as many steps, so maybe 150, 200. Um, and it also auto downloads these for you, so you'll get your video. Um, you'll also get the saved checkpoint. So this is, again, uh, you could come back to this and reuse it if you wanted to. Um, maybe optimize a little bit more and then continue from this point. Uh, so you get the video of that as well. And then if you want to download your image, you could just click here and go save image and you could save it to your desktop. Uh, so one thing you might be thinking is that as you look at this, you're like, okay, I see the low poly mushroom, but it doesn't look as nice as the VQ GANs. I mean, maybe, maybe you think it looks as nice or whatever, but it, it's not as smooth. And that's the difference between using VQ GAN versus this RGB method, right? So with this RGB method, it does look a little bit more pixely. Um, you see a little bit more grain in the image. So again, depending on what you want your output to be, you might want to base what you use as sort of what the generator is, right? So maybe if you want that smoother look, you want to use VQGAN. Um, if you want something that has a little bit more detail, a little bit more texture, uh, maybe the RGB version is, is better as well. Now, if I were going to optimize this a little bit more, I might also maybe put it at the macro level. Like I kind of noticed that like, my mushroom itself is fairly small, and then I get a lot of this sort of textural stuff around the edge. So here again, I would probably play with this, and maybe I would either do progressive growing, or I might do um, something like up updating this number to maybe 0.7. Um, sorry, my cat is going crazy right now because she wants attention, so one second. Okay, now I'm going to do this while holding a cat. So... Um, Again, uh, for this lesson, because I don't want to spend two hours just optimizing images, um, I'm going to say, like, play with these, maybe save out a bunch of versions for yourself. Uh, maybe if you do that work, maybe share that Slack so people can sort of see the difference between all these things. Um, but yeah, it's worth playing with a little bit more to maybe optimize this image a little bit more. Uh, but you should remember that every time you run this, you will get a different image. So if you were to run this again, you will not get the exact same image as this uh, because of all the various... Uh, randomness that's built into these models. So just be aware that like, if you like this one, you might actually need to like pull it into Photoshop, do some cropping, maybe edit a little bit uh, to keep it because you won't see this mushroom ever again, I don't think. So um, just keep that in mind. So uh, last thing we're going to do for this session um, is we're going to upload an image and we're going to use that. So I download an image of, let me see, where did my image of my mushroom go here? Let's see. Here we go. So I cropped one of our mushroom images and it's cropped to 512. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at how to use an image initialization. And then uh, what we'll do is instead of using a mushroom, we'll actually try to turn this into a spaceship. So let's go ahead and do that. So come back up to the top of our notebook. And we will instead, let's do spaceship. Now, one thing I should also note is like you don't have to just keep these to be very generic, right? You could say um, a spaceship... Uh, from Star Trek. I assume that will give us like a USS Enterprise or something. Um, you could do like, you know, a celestial spaceship from uh, an unknown galaxy across the globe. And like, that'll give you a different look. It'll like try to take all those words and try to mash together. So um, again, I really recommend playing with different text prompts. Try one that's really stark and basic, like a spaceship, and try another one that is really kind of out there and just sort of see what happens. Um, I think you'll often see that you get different results based on what you provide as text. Uh, so let's just look for one more thing in here. Let's try something else. Well, let's just do the, the default, like kind of cool one that I always do, which is that it is uh, featured on ArtStation. So featured on ArtStation. I don't think it really cares if you spell it correctly or like uh, capitalize the correct thing. Um, I'm not gonna use subtract and I'll just now we're going to click Upload Image. So we'll go ahead and run this cell. And now it gives you an option to upload image. So we're going to go ahead and click here. And we'll go Date Modified. And we'll grab our cropped image. So let's just double check. Yep. And one thing I recommend doing is 
you probably want to crop at least the proportions to the same as your image. Um, I bet that if you don't match the proportion, it'll just kind of like squish the image to the shape. So if you want to really get the best result, I mean, I would probably recommend cropping it and scaling it to the exact size you want to use here. Um, so for now, we'll just upload the image. So I did crop it and scale it to 512 by 512 to make sure it doesn't get squished. Uh, we'll keep 512 by 512. We'll keep all these tools. And maybe let's, so I, we'll keep this at like, let's turn this down a little bit. We'll keep it large. So again, we're going to take our mushroom image and this time we are going to generate it, generate a spaceship from it. And we'll see how that works. So I've set all this stuff. So we'll go ahead and just hit play. And I'll let the first couple samples run and then we'll take a look and see what we get. So it looks like because we're uploading an image, we also need to download a new model. So this will just take a couple of seconds. Looks like it'll take about 30 seconds. Um, VGG 16, uh, many of you have taken a class with me before, know about VGG. Uh, it happens to be a, a, a very common image um, classifier. And my guess is that what this is going to do is actually going to pull apart the layers of VGG 16 and apply some of those. This is a common style transfer technique. So it'll probably take some of the styles from the image and apply that. And you know what? Here is where I was completely wrong. So the image uploader does not actually uh, initialize your image. I think what it does is it pulls out all of the styles from your image and it's going to try to apply that to our run here. So um, may a couple on my end. There are other, if you're interested in a tool that allows you to in initialize with an image, um, there are many other ones. So I will share those as well if anyone's interested in that. But this it looks like it's going to try to pull apart the semantics of that image um, and apply it to this. So I'm going to pause the recording again and we'll come back when this is finished and we'll take a look at it. Okay, so we have finished and uh, sure enough, um, I'm doing a great job of showing you all the things you shouldn't do as I go through this notebook because apparently I forgot how this works. Um, but you'll see I've uploaded our final image. Um, still looks like a mushroom, but one thing I do think is really interesting is if we compare this to our final image or the mushroom that we uploaded. So here's the mushroom we uploaded and here is what our image looks like. Um, and you'll see that it's sort of generating more of these little rocket looking kind of things in a bunch of places. And if you look closely, there's a little bit of like sparkliness that almost might be like stars. So not perfect. Uh, in fact, what I would probably say for this particular notebook is your image upload should probably somehow correlate to your main topic. Um, so if you want something that is a, a spaceship from Star Trek, you might want to prompt it with an image from maybe, I don't know, Star Trek The Next Generation or you know maybe an, an old version of Star Trek, which would then just sort of like push it in that direction. Um, so my bad on this, uh, but we're learning as we go through it. Um, and also if we want to watch our image be generated from here, You'll see it sort of found that that smaller rocket shape first, which I think is interesting. Also, uh, this may look like some famous Star Trek spaceship, and I just don't know enough about Star Trek. So if you're like, no, it looks like this thing, and you're screaming at the screen, I'm sorry. Uh, my bad. Um, so this wraps up sort of what we're going to do with Aphantasia, because this is just to sort of get used to sort of like playing with text prompts, playing with some of these variables, understanding what VITB32 is. Um, all of this will be applicable to Illustrip, which is going to be the tool we're going to use to generate videos. Um, so this particular model really just works on generating uh, single images. The next tool we're going to look at, uh, we'll look at generating video. So for that, uh, we'll call, wrap this session up, and then uh, if you want to take a break or whatever, like we'll jump into the uh, next session.